Hey everybody, Dennis Wood here, and today we're going to be doing a brake fluid flush on this 2018 Nissan Leaf SL. Um, doesn't really matter what the make or model is. If it's an ICE car, an EV car, it's pretty much the same stuff. So first of all, I don't have a relationship with Bosch in any way, um, but I really do like this uh, brake fluid, this 5.1 or dot 5.1 fluid. Uh, not dot five, which is silicone. This is dot 5.1, which is backwards compatible with dot three and dot four. In other words, if you have a number of vehicles in your stable, as we do, uh, you can just buy this and use it. One of the reasons I like the Bosch specifically, I did a deep dive on this. The military did some uh, research on what best to use for their equipment. One of the benefits of this ESI six extended service dot 5.1 fluid is that it is about twice as uh, runny or twice as viscous, if you like, uh, dot three at minus 40 Celsius. Now we get pretty cold winters here. We do get down to minus 35. I've been using this fluid in three of our cars now, uh, running three, four years. And there is a definite difference in the cold temps. In other words, uh, you don't feel, a, you don't get a spongy or a, a, a stiff, not a spongy, but a stiff pedal in the cold weather with this. Um, they tout some benefits with ABS. It's gonna be faster and so on. And that's probably true. Your, your ABS circuit time, uh, or the time it takes from the ABS pressure to get to the brakes in a panic stop in ice conditions, probably better. Um, it, I don't know if anyone's tested it, but in any case, I really like the fluid. Uh, I just use one fluid now. I don't keep dot three, I don't keep dot four, just this. So that's my talk about brake fluid. So this is the stuff we'll be using today. I have been using it, like I said, for three to four years on all of our vehicles, which call for dot three, dot four. And we had an Audi as well previously that I was using this with. So. Let's talk about brake fluid flush frequency. There's a lot of talk. You'll, if you go on the forums, people will say, I've never changed my brake fluid. Um, and uh, there are people who say, oh, listen, you know, Nissan recommends it every two years, which they do. Um, so it is a good idea to follow those recommendations, in my opinion. Uh, why? Because there's more to brake fluid than just uh, moisture. Uh, people will measure, they'll use a tool like this, which uh, we'll, we'll take a look at, um, it basically turned on and off. It gives you uh, a rough idea of what the moisture level is. There are brake testing strips like this, which are uh, designed to test the amount of copper or loose copper in the system, which gives you an idea of where you're at with uh, corrosion um, or wear in the system. So it's important to note the brake fluid is not just fluid. It's got, um, obviously the solvent is, is a large part of it, but um, there's also anti-foaming agents, there's anti-corrosion agents and some lubricants. Um, so you wouldn't go two or three years or four years without changing your engine oil. My sort of thing is for the cost of this, uh, a liter of this at Rock Auto is like 10 bucks, uh, maybe less. Um, I would just test it. Uh, these testing strips, by the way, up here in Canada run about 30 bucks for 15. So you can pay 33 bucks for the testing strips and you can buy one of these from Amazon for not a lot of money. Uh, but for 10 bucks, you can just buy the brake fluid. So we're going to be doing that today. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about are uh, methods of bleeding. Uh, I've tried a lot of different things. I raced for about 10 years um, and I really found that the only thing that ever got you like a really solid pedal uh, up until using these pressure type bleeders was actually having somebody in the car to pump the brakes. But using a pressure type bleeder, which is what you're going to be using today, um, is the best I've seen. It doesn't, you can do it by yourself. Um, and pretty much is a very consistent solid pedal when you're done. So I don't use any method of vacuum bleeding. I, I do have this vacuum bleeder and we'll talk a little bit here about why I don't use uh, vacuum bleeding and why I don't think you should either. So first of all, if we look at uh, this, this is a brake uh, bleeder valve. Uh, so this is what the bleeder looks like. It's got a little hole at the bottom and it, it's not hollow. Uh, the fluid has to basically, once you loosen this off, the, uh, and you unseat the, the bottom of it here, the fluid basically can go uh, in this channel or in this hole that's drilled in the side and up. What it means though, if you happen to hook up a, a vacuum bleeder like this one, and this is just, uh, it's just ba basically pulling a vacuum into this cup. If you, if you pull a vacuum on this, not only does it uh, pull a vacuum from this hole, but also pulls a vacuum from around the threads. And conversely, if you're in the car and you know maybe you've, you're using a method where you've just got the hose hooked up. Uh, I've seen this too, where people have a bottle um, full of fluid and they will place this higher and just keep pumping 
the pedal. Well, the problem with pumping the pedal uh, with this bleeder valve loose is that it can suck air. It may not suck air through this tube, but it can suck air past these threads. Um, so what'll happen is if you're doing the method where you just sits inside, again, pumping, and you've got some brake fluid in it, or you're just pumping uphill basically, so that the air cannot, or so you think the air cannot enter. It can still enter through the threads. The only way to really prevent that is to wrap this uh, in Teflon tape. These are really shallow threads, so I don't wrap them in Teflon tape um, because A, brake fluid will over time probably dissolve it anyway or break it down. Um, but you're, you're, there's not a lot of thread to play with with this. It's not like it's a coarse thread like you would with uh, a typical plumbing fitting. So I don't use ABS. What I do is pressure bleed. I don't recommend that you use vacuum for anything other than emptying out the master cylinder, which we're going to do right now. Before you start pumping brake fluid into the uh, master cylinder, before you start pumping brake fluid into the master cylinder, you want to get your wheels off. Um, if you're doing this at home with a, uh, just a, a, a hoist, one of the first things you want to do before you start uh, pumping fluid into the master cylinder is just to check and make sure you can get all your, bleeder, uh, your bleeder valves one of the first things that you want to do if you are one of the first things that one of the first things you want to do before you start pumping fluid into the master cylinder is to make sure all your bleeder your brake bleeder valves uh, will can be loosened if you do break one inside the caliper um, generally go buy a new caliper uh, because you probably aren't going to have great results by drilling this out retapping it there's a seat at the bottom of it good chance you'll damage it uh, so the first thing to do is to make sure that you can actually remove these. Now, these are only torqued um, with something like 39 inch pounds. So we're talking, you know, like three or four foot pounds, um, which is not a lot of torque. However, uh, if you've never done this and you've got some break, uh, if you get some rust on the caliper, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to be locked up. And when you try to remove them, uh, it's not hard to break them. Uh, so before you, if you're thinking that the thing's going to be tight, um, I suggest using the, you know, a small wrench that, uh, this is a 10 mil, um, there are brake, you know, uh, there are brake fitting wrenches uh, that you can use, but I, I, I just like to use these little ratchet guys. Uh, it happens to be 10 millimeter here on this Nissan Leaf. There's a rubber cap on there, which you're going to need to remove. So I just use one of these little, uh, split tip screwdriver type dealios, pop that off. And it's so easy to lose these things. My suggestion is that uh, you pick up uh, some replacements. These ones have a little uh, retaining collar, so they'll actually stay on. Um, so we can, I, I do have some on hand as well as some extra bleeder screws. But what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna put a little bit of torque on this thing. Now I have bled these brakes before. And let's just say for the sake of argument that this was stuck. Now, the first time I did this, um, I had some trouble uh, so what you can do, um, I happen to be using this uh, PB blaster, pick your penetrating fluid. I mean, you can soak it. And uh, generally what I find though, is that doesn't work. Um, or if you do soak it maybe a week or two previously, you'll have decent results. What works pretty much every time is heat uh, or a couple of heat cycles, maybe two or three heat cycles combined with the penetrating fluid. So what I do, uh, I happen to have some map gas here, which burns a little bit hotter than propane, but propane works. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just flame this up and uh, okay and then the important thing is not a lot of flame and you don't want to melt anything here but we'll go in and basically heat around the fitting not the fitting itself so i'll do this uh, for a few minutes again making sure that behind here there's no plastic that you're burning i will just heat this up this never fails. And you may want to heat it for a few more minutes or for a minute or two to get some good heat. We're going to shortcut this and basically turn this off because I'm, I'm pretty sure these, these are going to come right off. And then what you do is you hit the fitting itself with the penetrating fluid and you end up kind of cooling the, uh, the bleeder valve down while leaving the material around it hot, which uh, I think after about two or three heat cycles, almost uh, I've never broken one using the, I have broken not using heat. I've never broken using heat and preferably, you know, three cycles like that, but making sure not to burn yourself. Generally, you can see that that's now loose. Um, 
And I'm using a ratchet 10 millimeter here. I kind of, it's easier to use one that isn't a ratchet so you can kind of open and close these. Uh, it's not so important when you've got pressure in the bleeder though, and that's what I love about these, is that there's always pressure, so there's never air gonna be sucked back for any reason. Um, so there you go, there's kind of my hot tips for making sure every one of these uh, can be loosened. In the case that you can't loosen one, well, you're not gonna be able to flush the fluid out, and just keep in mind that the most likely scenario with really old fluid, other than it boiling off early, uh, earlier, because as brake fluid accumulates moisture, the boiling point lowers. Now, um, I'll look up the specs for the 5.1, but I think it's somewhere around 420 degrees Fahrenheit where it, uh, uh, before it boils. So it will basically, you know, if you're, if you're, if you got a truck and you're towing, uh, there's really nothing better than the 5.1 fluid uh, to have in your vehicle, whether it's dot three or dot four. Five one's gonna give you a higher boiling point and it's gonna give you better performance in cold weather as well. And again, it's almost easier to do this on the ground or close to the ground so you don't get fluid all over the place. It's also easier to keep the thing full. So we'll go ahead and lower it actually, cause it's easier. And then we'll go ahead and bleed all uh, four sides or rather uh, we're gonna flush all four sides. We'll put about a liter through the system. All right, so we're gonna do some bleeding here. Um, we're gonna do the pressure method, which again, if you're doing it by yourself, it's kind of hard to beat. Um, I, don't, and I explained earlier why I don't use any type of suction uh, down at the calipers. Um, I originally started using this uh, Motive uh, power bleeder, which basically you hook up. Uh, the thing I don't like about this is you got to pump. And as the pressure, as you bleed, this depletes. So if this is up in the air, you got to get up on a ladder and keep pumping it. So I moved to the Speedy Bleed system, which is designed to use uh, compressed air um, from either a tire or from a compressor, which is what I'm going to use. So we're going to put this motive one away and um, we'll have a look at the speedy bleed. Now the speedy bleed, at the end of this, there's a check valve right here. Uh, there's a regulator here. And what you want to do before you start is just back this right off. Uh, and this would be counterclockwise, basically all the way out. Uh, so that there's zero pressure on the system. And then you can go ahead and hook it up to whatever, whatever air pressure you have. I've put a, an air fitting here for my system, but the unit came with this fitting that's designed to basically screw onto a tire valve uh, in place of my uh, quick release uh, nipple here. So basically the way it comes, you can just hook it to a tire and use your tire pressure, uh, which is cool. I have a compressor, so I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use this necessarily. So, but it does come that way. Uh, the other thing that I like about these pressure bleeders is they come with these caps, or um, rather you can order the caps. This is a C1000, which happens to fit this 2018 Nissan Leaf, but I have uh, a Toyota basically version of this. Uh, this fits our Highlander. And I also have this one that uh, I use for the our Honda CRV. And I got a few other caps in here. One, this one in particular, uh, for Audi and Volkswagen, which is a screw-on type cap. It's kind of a slick setup. Um, and again, with a fitting here that I used with the Motive. But um, in this case, it's just super easy to use. Now, there is a quick release here. So the deal is here is you can put this on your master cylinder and engage the quick release. This is really easy not to have uh, properly connected. So you want to pull this collar back, push it all the way in. If it's not properly connected, you won't get any pressure through it. And you'll be trying to figure out why nothing's coming out of your uh, bleed nipples. So what I like to do with this thing, and we're not gonna uh, fill it up. Obviously make sure this is clean, which I've done with compressed air already. Uh, this we're gonna go ahead and hook up to our compressor. So we'll do that. I have this fitting right here and I have this thing at pretty high pressure right now, but you'll see on the regulator, let's just put this over here. When we connect this up, okay, the regulator, because I've got it backed right out, is basically showing us a zero PSI. So, we'll just get that out of the way. One of the things I don't like about the Speedy Bleed or any of these systems is that they topple easily and usually in the engine bay, you have um, things going on and it's hard to find a flat surface. This Nissan has a, uh, you know, a, a nice big vertical surface. Usually there's a valve cover or something you can use. I just use this uh, basically clamp, Irwin clamp, and just kind of gently grab onto the bottom. That just keeps it from tipping over. It's kind of a hot tip. Um, and what I'll do now is I will grab a uh, clean funnel and we'll put about a liter of uh, the brake fluid in here and we'll connect this cap up. So this cap uh, happens to work uh, just, 
This is the cap for this uh, particular leaf. Uh, for the earlier ones, you have to look on the website for Speedy Bleed because you may have a different number of pro uh, tabs on your cap and you have to basically choose based on that. Now, before you uh, bleed, what I like to do with this, there's a little filter in here. You can kind of reach in with your pinky. You should probably be wearing gloves for this. Obviously, make sure you don't get brake fluid on your paint because it eats it. Everybody knows that. I'll just put that on something clean. And we're going to grab this out of frame. Really, the only thing I use this vacuum setup for now is just to uh, take the fluid out of the system. So I'm going to do that. And we'll even test this later. I've actually topped this up um, recently uh, because I was uh, testing the fluid. So we're just going to basically suction out everything that's there, the old stuff. If you've been, there may be some dirt in the bottom of your cylinder, but the idea here is just to get out as much as you can. And you can see it's filling up this container. This fluid is, by the way, when it's new, it's pretty clear. So you can you can see it's probably oxidizing. Um, and again, a lot of people will say, well, I've never changed my brake fluid. Uh, and to that, I'd say, well, then, you know, it might look okay. It might not have a lot of water in it, but what condition are the uh, additives there to prevent corrosion and uh, uh, lubrication for all the seals that are going on, all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm just going to set this off. We're going to test that fluid. So I'll just set that off for now. And make sure you keep track of that filter in that cap. I'm actually going to put that filter back in straight up because there's no point in introducing dirt. And we'll go ahead and hook this cap up. Forehead to the camera. And that's, it's actually a nice little design. Just kind of pops on there. And connect up. And we're going to take this and pull this little connector back. A little easier to do if it's facing you, but I'm just going to do it this way because that's the way it's on there. Make sure that that's fully pushed down. And then we're going to go ahead and introduce some fluid into this uh, cylinder with a clean funnel, which I don't have on hand. So what I want to do is take a funnel. This one is clean, hasn't been used with other fluids. And we'll just pop this cap off. Obviously, if there's pressure in here, it would be uh, going everywhere. This, um, inside the tube, by the way, this just has a plastic tube that goes down to the bottom. It's designed to pick up the brake fluid. If you look inside this bottle, it just has a, a pickup tube that uh, heads down from this nipple to the bottom. And uh, so you're not putting air in there, you're putting fluid in. And we're just gonna fill this up with, uh, uh, here, we'll even tilt this over a bit. Very satisfying. We're going to put about a liter through. A liter or so will cover most systems. You can see there's a line there. That'll do the trick. Actually, might as well fill that up. Again, you don't want to go right to the top because you definitely don't want to go higher than the air tube because otherwise We'll just be blowing bubbles in. Again, we'll be careful there. And throw this cap back on the frame. Set down our funnel. We'll throw this cap on. Now there's a warning on this tube not to exceed 40 PSI. Um, I think 40 would be risking things because this master cylinder is not really designed to take, uh, it's not designed to take 40 PSI, so I would not do that. Um, one of the things to point out too, on most cars, on older cars, for example, your brake booster is a big vacuum uh, canister back there that provides brake boost. So when you press the pedal, the vacuum canister provides assist and gives you, you know, power brakes. On an EV, which doesn't have vacuum or internal combustion, obviously, uh, there's this big electronic deal back there. Um, that's about $4,000 to replace. So if you want some motivation to sort of <laughs> take care of your brake fluid, um, this would be one of them. The brake fluid doesn't lubricate any of that. It's basically an electric motor and some sensors and some really big springs. So if you were to remove this master cylinder, um, uh, it would come out with some force because there's springs behind it. 
uh, to retract um, when you uh, relax, or to, to retract the piston, the master cylinder piston when you relax. So that piece back there in its entirety is about four grand. Uh, if it, if, you know, if things go south, you're gonna be into a very expensive repair. Um, and this particular one has our two, our front, basically two lines coming out and we have ABS over here, the ABS pump uh, that has four lines out to each. Uh, so we can individually break the wheels depending on what the ABS wheel sensor is telling it. So there's lots going on here. Uh, it's lots of money. Well, 10 bucks for the fluid, so why not flush it every uh, two or three years? I'm, I find that about three years is where I get to uh, with this DOT 5.1. Uh, I'm just getting to the 2% uh, moisture, so two to maybe uh, slightly over two. Um, and I think once you get to that one or 2%, again, it's time to start flushing. The whole purpose of brake fluid is actually to absorb water so that you don't have uh, water that's rusting your system. It can only do that to a certain point. So when you get to the 2% point, um, you know, that would be a sign to change it. But my, th my thinking is, I'm not sure if I would waste money on the test strips or the moisture. I mean, it's nice to know on an older car. I did check um, an older vehicle just now that uh, probably is original brake fluid. It checked in at about one or 2%. So um, that was a Ford F-150. So we're gonna introduce a bit of pressure here carefully and I'm going now clockwise. And you can see, I'll just put 10 on there because that's all we need. It ain't to go we don't need to go crazy. And you, I don't know if you saw that, but some fluid immediately uh, pressurized. I'm not seeing any bubbles. There's not any fluid going anywhere, which is a good thing. That means we're ready to start uh, pressure bleeding the system. So we can go back to the wheel and uh, we'll just uh, see what comes out. So we'll grab uh, one of these cameras and go down there and do that. As we get into the car here, the one thing I do like to do is um, hook up a tube here, which uh, just makes things a little cleaner. And you can see that's a bad fit. So actually, yeah, so much for that. We'll just drain that in. It's nice to have a, it's nice to have a tube to fit uh, if you can here so you're not getting brake fluid dripping all over the place. But if you do just release this, um, it's just gonna get, um, you're gonna get a bit of fluid on your calipers. If you've got fancy pants paint, uh, painted calipers, then you definitely wanna figure out a tube. We'll go see if we can find one there. Okay, we got a bit of hose here we can throw on there. I think that's just some old washer hose. And we're just gonna, uh, again, 10 millimeter, we're just gonna crack this off. And we'll see, fluid coming out. And if I just pull this off for a sec, gives you an idea. It's actually looking pretty good. Now the great thing about having this bleeder like this Let's put this back on. So we get fluid all over the place. The great thing about the even pressure is that uh, I still have 10 psi, and I can basically walk away. I mean, the trick here is you don't want to, you don't want things to go dry. So we'll let that uh, continue to do its thing. And you'll see. Uh, actually, we're down to we're down a little bit of pressure here. Um, so we're going to just crank this back up to about 10. You could probably go to 15. I don't really like to push things beyond 10 or 11 or 12 like we're at. And you can see the fluid starts to come down. Um, now, there's obviously more fluid in the longer lines to the back. So in this case, you can kind of look right at your level as it's going down. I probably have about two, 200 milliliters through. Um, and that actually is probably enough, uh, given the fact that I pumped out the master already. So we'll go down there and just turn that off. You can see the fluid's just doing its thing there. If you collect it, especially if it's old fluid, you'll see a change in color. Um, this uh, Bosch 5.1 has a bit of a, just a slight amber tinge to it. It's almost clear. You see now, actually you can see right about now it's gotten quite clear. Uh, so that probably means that we're through and we're done. This wheel and now it doesn't matter what I do here because there's no possibility of air entering. Why? Because there's positive pressure. And that's why I like using this pressure bleeder more than any other system. Uh, by the way, um, if you have, I mean, there's videos in the, in, in, uh, on the interwebs there on flushing the brakes. If you have an assistant and quite frankly, like there's no reason why you can't do that. If you have 
somebody who's willing to take uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. The procedure is real simple. It's like you pump up, you uh, I'll just drop that in there. You pump up the brakes inside. Um, nice to have the windows open. And when the person has pressure, you basically release this. Okay. And then they'll have them call out uh, when the pedal's to the floor. And the trick is you don't want them to pump the brakes at all. You just want them to push until it's to the floor. And then when it's at the floor, you basically tighten, let them pump up again and repeat that process. So the trick is never have this loose while they're lifting up on the pedal and uh, just have them communicate when the pedal's firm and when it's at the floor. And you can do that with, an, with a partner. Um, it's quite easy to do and doesn't take a lot of time. Um, so what I'm gonna do on this one, I do, I'm gonna kind of snug this back up. It's really easy to over tighten these because they're quite small. Uh, if you look up the spec, it's something like 39 inch pounds. Um, but what I do basically is snug it and really just go a few, a bit more. Uh, you don't want it too tight. If you do want to take a torque wrench to it, and you probably should, then the torque spec for these particular ones, I believe is 39 inch pounds, which is less than four foot pounds. It's like three and a half foot pounds. So it's not a lot of torque. Very easy to strip and or break this. And you don't want to do that. So I'm going to do what I always do with these things and grab some anti-seize. Again, we're in the rust belt here. And yeah, it's messy. I just kind of go to town with uh, anti-seize around those threads. You can see how easy this came off, by the way, because I did do this three years ago. And we'll throw one of these bad puppies on there. You can kind of roll that rubber bit down and throw the cap back on and call her done. So rinse and repeat. Just make sure that's all the way on. And rinse and repeat times four. And we'll call that done. We can run a little test on the brake fluid that I pulled out of the cylinder with this. Uh, I got anti-seize all over this thing now. Um, I basically, you basically press it, check, and you can see I'm actually, if I check this a few times, and I suggest you do, we're probably um, uh, less than 1%, close to two. Keep in mind that I um, pumped out the master cylinder and refilled it a little while ago. But when I did check it, um, I was just seeing 2% um, between, or between one and 2%. With these inexpensive testers, you, be, you, you really do need to try them uh, a couple of times. We can go ahead and try the uh, fluid test strip, uh, or sorry, try the copper test strip and see what we're getting out of this. But again, um, I'm expecting not to see much because the fluid that we took out of there is pretty fresh, uh, literally like a month ago. So, um, but what I did see when I tested it originally is right around one to two percent, which is considered okay, um, and that's probably a good sign that you know now's the time to change it. I wouldn't wait till it gets to three percent because if it gets to three or four percent, then you're, you may be compromising some components or introducing some corrosion into the cylinder. So, good idea to. I say just change it every two years. All right, so we've now flushed through uh, one liter of the Bosch 5.1 fluid. Um, we'll call this uh, pretty much done. One thing I should mention is I did look up that spec uh, for the uh, nipples. So these 10 millimeter, and by the way, I ended up replacing the back too because they were looking a little nasty. You can see this one um, is, uh, they're getting pretty rusty and they tend to get rounded off too, especially if somebody um, has been whaling on with an inappropriate tool. This one is really rounded off. So um, for the cost of having a, for a few replacements in, we went ahead and replaced the two in the back. I still have some pressure on the system. So the last thing you want to do is uh, release the pressure. I should mention that there's a check valve here that prevents, uh, you know, if you disconnect the uh, a tire after you pressurize this, for example, this prevents uh, any backflow or any fluid from going back, uh, say, into your tire. So it's kind of an important bit. But we'll go ahead and pull our uh, compressor hose off here. And this will bleed out uh, through this uh, regulator. And uh, pretty much we're done like dinner. So um, again, had I not been filming this, probably including the time to uh, jack the car up and so on, you're probably looking at... Uh, I don't know, 35 to maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so really not a lot of time, 10 bucks worth of fluid. And again, we've talked about how expensive all these bits are. In case I didn't mention it, the torque for those nipples was 69 inch pounds. Uh, so it's not a lot. I actually used a torque wrench on them because it's kind of comforting to know that you're exactly right. You're not over tightening. And I did have to use heat.
and uh, on the back ones because they were just uncomfortably tight. If, if they're not coming off with, uh, you know, like four or five foot pounds, then use the heat. So there you go. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Always appreciated. And we'll continue on with some uh, interesting DIY videos in the shop. Cheers. All right, so one of the nice things about using a pressure bleeder like the Speedy Bleed, it's pretty much a one-person operation. But it's easy enough that your 16-year-old daughter is very capable of helping along. So uh, listen, Andy, uh, I'll be back shortly. I just got to get some paper towel. Okay. Okay. <sighs> well, I think... Let's take a little break here. Check out my comments on the garage journal. Yeah. Ah, good old Molson Canadian. Old boy should be thinking twice about his lunch portions more than your CV shafts. Dad? Uh, yeah, uh, be there in a minute. Okay. Wow, fat comment. Mm. I'll with it. Like, I'm done. That was easy. How's it going in there? I've been done. <sighs> Sunset. What am I supposed to do now? <laughs>